Hi, it's Tom. I'm the Medical Method and I'm back. I'm talking today about how I passed my surgical exam in two months of study. It doesn't lie, I started studying two months out from the exam and managed to um, more than pass actually. I, I did a pretty good job. Um, and I want to take you through sort of how I did it. Um, take you through five easy steps to passing any difficult exam and yeah, tell you a little bit about my experience during the way. In Australia, the GSSE, um, or the General Surgical Sciences Exam, is an exam that any surgical candidate needs to pass at some point in their surgical training. Uh, in Australia at the moment, most people are doing the GSSE before actually entering their specialty training. So the equivalent in the US um, would be before entering residency. I know you guys sit the US MLEs and those kinds of things, but um, even within certain surgical specialties, there are knowledge exams that you might have to pass, and the methods that I use here will be useful for that. So the first thing that you have to do for these types of exams is define the challenge. What I mean by define the challenge is spend at least the first day or two days um, thinking about the exam, speaking to people who have sat the exam and trying to just kind of conceptualize what the, the challenge is. So for me, the GSSE had 50% anatomy, 25% physiology, 25% pharmacology. Within each of anatomy, physiology, and pharmacology, there are a bunch of subtopics and sort of systems that um, are included. So, for example, in anatomy, there's head and neck, there's upper limb, there's thorax, abdomen, pelvis, lower limb, um, and some other things like development, histology, um, that kind of thing. So for each of the categories, I then worked out how many of the marks are assigned to those questions, what sort of the breakup is um, effectively. And same thing for physiology and pharmacology. Now, this is where um, finding people who have sat the exam is really critical because I was fortunate enough for the GSC to have a bunch of resources that were passed down to me. I wish I could share share them in this video, but I can't just share the link because a lot of them are copyrighted and I'll get into a lot of trouble. But I would just ask around your surgical registrars, trainees, residents, etc. They'll have these types of um, secret resources. One of them had all of the questions in the RACS question bank. So RACS is the surgical body in Australia. Um, and how many questions for each category there were. So, uh, thorax, abdomen, upper limb, lower limb had lots of questions. So each of those might have constituted almost like 20% of the exam. And then head and neck was maybe about 10%. And then pelvis was another 10%. Anyone doing maths means they already reached 100. Um, and, but there were also like a couple of questions on histology, um, development, and that, that was pretty much it. So that's defining the challenge. How many questions are there? How long is the exam? What different topics are there? Um, so once I did that, I started defining the yield of each of the sections and assigned how difficult I thought each section would be. So depending on your background or what the test you're sitting is, you'll have, um, you'll have a different answer. But I basically used three highlighters, which I actually have the highlighters used here. The, the sort of like mementos. Um, I highlighted green, anything that I thought I could, um, I didn't have to study too much and I, I already knew a little bit about and I worked that out by doing questions. So if I was getting sort of 50, 60, 70% of those questions right, then that was a green. Um, yellow was where I did had about sort of 50% of the questions right. I sort of half remembered med school for some of them, others I didn't. And then Orange was, I cannot remember this at all. So I, I had head and neck, orange. I had thorax, um, yellow, abdomen, yellow, pelvis, orange. I had upper limb is green because I'd done a lot of upper limb in med school that I remembered and lower limb is yellow. So basically I, I didn't know anything particularly well except for upper limb. So I then looked at the yield of each of the each of these things. So I've got thorax and abdomen both being yellow, but they constitute most of the exam. Pelvis being orange, so it's a lot going to be a lot of work for me to, you know, study that. Um, and basically created this map. Now it sounds obvious, but I don't think a lot of people, um, when they do this type of study, are cutthroat enough about the yield. So for instance, pathology, pharmacology, physiology, 
I just flat out didn't study for it. I, I did practice questions and I was getting sort of 60, 70% correct. I knew that that was around the pass mark. So I just didn't study. I had two months. I didn't know any anatomy. I knew that I could probably get by with pathology and physiology. So I, I just studied anatomy. Um, and in the last sort of few days, uh, I started looking at some physiology, pharmacology, just refreshing my memory, studying high questions that came up a lot in their practices, but I, I completely ignored it. Um, if you're trying to study for these tests, you have to be very, yeah, you just have to be cut through. You have to be really efficient in what you decide to study. So then I looked at my schedule. I had eight weeks until the exam. I had head, neck, one, two, three, four. I had about seven or eight systems to study, so I had a week per system. But what I did was I didn't study for development. I decided that I'd give head and neck and pelvis a week together because they're only 10% each. So then I squeezed out about 10 days per kind of area to study. So 10 days per area, I've got them defined by yield. That's it, start studying. So what was study? Well, for me um, and anyone studying a you know, a professional level test should know how they study, should understand what they're good at. But for me, that was writing handwritten notes. Um, so I would use Netta, which is an anatomy textbook that draws beautiful pictures and really helps you get three-dimensional sense for where structures are and where they run in relation to each other. Um, and then for the knowledge base information, I used Last Anatomy, which for my surgical exam was the uh, sort of like the, the book that they said was the gospel. So, you know, there are different um, storytellers of anatomy. And for this exam in Australia, last was the one that they say is accurate. Um, and then I went question by question. I only used questions. I found this amazing resource, like I said, that had every single question in the surgical college's question bank in one place. And for every question, I studied each of the options, why they were correct or incorrect, looked at Netta, looked at lasts, wrote my handwritten notes, and basically completely understood why the question was right, but also why all of the other options were incorrect. Um, and I, for each category, I would go through every, every question I could and basically study nearly full time um, uh, for, the, for that two months. So study you know, nine to five or um, when I had work on, I would study basically all, all night and, and early in the morning beforehand. Um, so then imagine I've studied thorax, I come to the end of the 10 days, now what do I do? I use space repetition and I know you're sighing and probably gonna leave the video, but I found that it was actually really useful to really commit and I use Google Calendar really strictly here. So if I'd studied, for instance, like the intercostal muscles on a Monday, then I had this automated workflow on um, uh, on IFTT. I'll link it, link it, it's a really cool app. But basically, once I studied a topic, I would book calendar links um, a day, seven days, 30 days, 90 days. And each day before I started my new study, I would look at my calendar and see the topics that I had to review on that day. And all I would do is read through my notes, but, but do like active reading. So I wouldn't just kind of gloss over, I would really read the question, pick my answer. Do I actually understand this? Do I remember why that something is the case? If I was struggling and I didn't remember, I would actually hit that IFTT again for the following day. So I did space repetition, but I would keep doing daily repetitions until I felt like I could go to a week out. And I would keep doing weekly repetitions until I felt like I could go to a month out. Um, and this really worked well for me because I studied thorax and abdomen first. I kind of went from the head down, skipping head and neck. Um, and I, it means like whatever you're worst at, you should do last because you're gonna kind of cram that before the exam. But thorax um, was, you know, it's my interest having done cardiothoracics. So I did thorax, then I did abdomen, um, but I was keep continuously reviewing thorax and actually remember thorax, you know, the best from, from doing that study. Um, and then finally, in the last few days before the exam, I actually stopped doing additional study and started meticulously reviewing my notes, reviewing my notes, reviewing my notes. Um, 
and yeah, I, I passed. Um, I, I think that you know the process that I did can be replicated. So the most important steps just reviewing are define the challenge. Um, so breaking, you know, understand, break up the exam, break up your study kind of by the yield of the topics and how many questions or how much value each of the topics is and be really ruthless um, about it. Um, study for the allotted time and don't stretch on either end. You have to study for the allotted time. Um, use space repetition, like I said, with, you know, automations and other things, Google Calendar, really commit to it, but make sure that you don't put it into like a week or a month away bucket if you're not sure. So I kept on repeating daily until I could move it into those next buckets from daily to weekly to monthly, etc. Um, and yeah, I guess, I guess that's kind of my story of, of how I, how I passed my surgical exam in two months. Um, sorry, I know it's a bit verbose, but I hope you found it useful talking about it. Um, I'll link some of the resources in the description, but I really, I love Netta's anatomy, especially for anyone studying anatomy. That's, that's amazing. It's beautiful pictures. Um, and yeah, I think, I think that's, that's pretty much it from me. Um, if you've made it this far, thank you for staying for so long, like subscribe, and I'll try to be making more videos about my experiences, um, and sort of where I, where I am and everything being a doctor in Melbourne. Cool. Thanks guys. Bye.